Hello everyone and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot on the Sony PlayStation 1. As usual, I am one more sheep and today we're going to take care of the Rolling Stones. And as you can expect from this level, there's a lot of Rolling Stones. Go figure. So what's so, what's so, what's so big about these Rolling Stones? Well, nothing much. Basically, it's the same as the Rolling Stones we saw in a previous level, but there's more of them. In fact, this entire level is based around platforming challenges in which you need to jump around the, the stones as they're rolling back and forth. And that's one of, that's, that face that we just picked up from that crate is actually a new one, folks. That is Embryo, which is also the guy who, actually, one of the main scientists that's working for Cortex at the minute. And he's also, he's also a boss fight that we're going to be taking on way later in the game. And I know a lot of people have issues trying to find all three Brio faces in this level and basically the way to get all three is on that last cluster of boxes that just blew up you want to get the one on the far back left that I picked up that's how you get the second Brio face I've found many years went by with me not realizing where's this face but there it is but anyway a lot of timing is required and uh, you know I'm sort of rushing through this level right now I don't advise you to do that the best thing you can possibly do is actually just slow down and go at a reasonable pa reasonable pace until you get to these platforms by here. If you notice a platform shaking above a bottomless pit, it is going to fall after you land on it after a second. So, if you see one a platform that's shaking, don't jump on the platform right away. Stay where you are and wait for the perfect time to jump off the platform and maneuver through to beat through the level. But anyway, uh, this is the next bonus stage, and these do get a lot harder, and the major challenge with some of the earlier bonus stages are just getting the crates, so that's the main challenge with these. In later bonus stages, just getting to the end is difficult, so, um, yeah. Although I do recommend picking up all these crates, these bouncy crates actually break after 10 bounces on them, so bounce on them 10 times and you'll get 10 apples or wumpa fruit. And they're the main, you might notice that it's picking up Wumpa Fruit quite a bit so far in the LP. Well, Wumpa Fruit is basically the major standard collectible of this game, like uh, rings or coins. And what happens? Well, just like rings and coins, if you collect 100 Wumpa Fruit, you'll gain yourself an extra life. Yay! More ways to get more lives, which we need. So yeah, the, um, that was one of the platforms, but there the falls, so be very careful. And be careful of some of the enemies in your environments, because as you can see, a lot of the enemies will just spawn randomly, they'll spawn out of nowhere. And the problem with the enemies that spawn, the, the enemies mainly, is that they spawn in the middle of nowhere, they'll spawn in weird locations, and they can be a bit of a menace to deal with, because you'll just be running along, suddenly an enemy will spawn on top of you, and you won't know how to deal with them, so... Just be careful of them. One of the main gimmicks about Embryo's special stages, though, that is bonus stages, is he, he's always at the end and he explodes. And basically, when you get into these, you tend to get a lot of extra lives. They're, they're really... They're a lot harder than the Torna special stages. But you do get a lot of extra lives out of them, so they're really worth it. I mean, we're not even half... We're not even halfway through the game. We've got 35 lives, for God's sake. This isn't a long LP, folks. It's only seven parts long, so there's that. <laughs> Great, but you missed this many boxes. How uh, must suck to be you. Oh, you condescending game. <laughs> I don't like it when the game does that. I really don't. Anyway, Hog Wild. What many people consider to be the first truly hardish level of the game. And it's also, I love the stage, it's fun. I mean, what compels you, Crash, to get, think, a warthog, I'm a gonna ride it, oh yeah. Seriously, what compels him to just do, jump on his warthog, I, I don't know. But anyway, the warthog's very simple to control, left and right moves left and right, and X button jumps, it's standard fare. And the major, the major trouble with this is you can't slow down, you have to keep going at a set speed, and you need to dodge the villagers, you need to dodge all the spiky pillars and you need to jump on these drums that bounce up further and even later on you need to dodge other warthogs that are being cooked I don't know how they're being cooked because there's no fire you'll see them in a minute but honestly the major trouble gain is the major difficulty I can imagine people having with the stage is actually getting the box gen because 
Collecting all the boxes in this level is pretty much a nightmare because your control is really stiff. It is unbelievably stiff. But the stage as a whole, very short, and once you know how to dodge everything, you can get it done quite easy. <laughs> I missed two boxes. Great! Oh, shut up, game. <laughs> but anyway, with that, as, um, we're heading on to the native fortress, which is actually the final stage in the first island of the game. Now, basically, the way this game is split up is three islands. Island one, which is basically has the level tropes we've seen up until this point. Then Island 2 comes around, and they introduce a couple of new level types, like uh, the temples and the roads to nowheres. And they even use the upstream level theme quite a lot as well. And then you have the third island, which is basically mechanical. Almost every level in the third island is mechanical based, apart from one or two, which are based on castles and... Oh, it's gonna be fun talking about them. Although I didn't have too bad an issue with dying in this LP. This is the second time I've done a Crash LP, by the way, people, and uh, all I can say is it's going a lot better than the first one. For one thing, the first one I, I, I did was pretty horrible, and I won't link it to anyone because I I don't think it went all that well. <laughs> but anyway, um, the piranha plant enemies that um, will try and bite you, by piranha plant, I mean literally plants that try and eat you, um, try and spin before you get near them because is very likely to get hit by those enemies. It's very easy to get hurt by mistiming your spin attack. And trust me, I've died so many times because I'm gonna spin. Oh no, I missed spun too early. Ah, or spun too late. Ah, and they die, and they're very annoying. Also, the turtle enemies, as you can tell, you can also jump on them and flip them on the back. So like in, so like the Koopas in Mario. The difference is with these turtles is when they flipped on the back, you can bounce on them even further and get sent. You can get a higher jump, you can go flying high in the sky, and there's even levels later on that actually force you to do this, to um, go through, so be careful. Also, this villager in particular, be careful of, I've di I died about three times in this LP just because of him. I think it was three. I'm not exactly paying attention to my life count and I edited these last night, so my memory isn't good enough to remember what I edited last night. But I digress, let's just continue moving. These monkey enemies, watch out. Because <laughs> uh, what these monkey enemies will do, they sort of imitate Diddy Kong in that they'll roll from left to right. And if you um, spin into them while they're rolling, then you're going to bounce right off them. And you're going to get sent into some, some abyss somewhere. Gu I can guarantee it. How did I do that? <laughs> Who's two boxes? Let's go in between them. Oh, what a jolly good plan. I should have spun when I was falling, actually, because then I could have got an extra life. Oh, past me. Why didn't you think? Oh, God, I'm going to die. Spin. But I digress. Anyway, these um platforms by here, what you want to do with these is basically jump and spin at the same time, and with, they'll flip open the platforms, allowing you to jump on a platform so in, to go higher. Yep into the gate. And trust me, this gate is huge. It is freaking huge. And I'm ignoring that mask. I don't know why. I probably should have gone for it. But um, here's something that not a lot of people actually know about. If you go in the background back here, you can skip a lot of platforming. Not a lot of people like to do this. I do because, hey, I'm going to make the game easier for myself and the game is hard as it is. Although I really mistimed that jump. You want to be careful of these um, I don't know what they are. I'm gonna call them cookers. Be careful of these cookers because obviously they'll light up on fire and you basically need to time your jumps so you don't get burned. You need to time your jumps so- Oh god, a cooker is gonna burn me! Ah! Basically you need to time your jumps to get by them. They're really not that hard to deal with but um, if, you're, if you're competent to timing, they're really pathetic. If you're not competent to timing, good luck! You're gonna die! A lot! <laughs> and I'm so glad I won't be watching because I'd probably scream at you. Well, no, because I probably wouldn't because I died so many times in a second because I missed time my jumps. But that's what editing is for. <laughs> I'm still only on 38 lives. Uh, like I said, you get a lot of lives in this game. You really do. But every time, um, basically, whenever I do die in this game, in each of these games, you'll see my life count usually drop by 5 to 6 or maybe even 10 lives at a time. And that's because whenever I'm you, I die in this, 
I'll show off my d one death, and then I'm gonna cut ahead to the successful run. That way you can see how easy you can die in a certain area. And you can see me succeed without going, Oh my god, this guy's crap! Blah, turn off the LP and unsubscribe! <laughs> Dislike video! Blah. So, <laughs> you know. That's what I like with my LPs. I like to try and streamline them so I can show what it's like whenever you fail. But I can also I also want to make it so it doesn't get so frustrating that you'll just sit there and go, Oh, come on already. Basically, my major problem with Game Grumps with a lot of the time because they tend to they tend to not get as much progress done as I would like in an LP, and that it bugs me. Game Grumps is a fine YouTube channel, by the way, so I check it out if I were you. But seriously, ugh, I don't like it when they when people go off track and they don't keep their mind focused in completing the game. Ah, but anyway, I digress. There's that level over and done with. So now we're gonna move up to the second island, and we're gonna go up the creek. And don't worry about the how long it looks until the next level. Trust me, the, the, the this level isn't that long. Basically, the map screen doesn't represent how long each level is because it would be cool if it did. Because then you just you'd look at the map and you realize, oh, it's a long path from this level to the next. It must be a long level, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm talking rubbish right now. <laughs> but anyway, watch out in this level because um. It's basically got the same mechanics as the previous creek level, but now we also got fish. They'll just, well, the fish were in the last one as well, but basically watch out for the fish jumping out of the water. Whenever you see the fish in the water, then chances are you need to spin, because otherwise you'll just jump into the fish and it'll hurt you. They act kind of like cheap cheeps in uh, Mario Brothers, so... Although they're not as cheap. Oh, <laughs> see what I did there? Oh, oh I need a life. Although I got a life because I just picked one up. <laughs> the puns, so they never end. Uh, maybe I should make it like a tree and leaf. Crash agrees. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm going to, in about a few minutes, I'm actually going to show off the monkey that spins you, well, the monkey bouncing you into like a pit somewhere. Because... I d when I first re when I was recording this, I never actually did get hit by the monkey before, so I was recording this and I was wondering, hmm, this spin the monkey game out of the way. Oh god, what the hell happened? Because I didn't realize you spin into the monkey while they're rolling and you'll fly off, so, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, I love sonic sound effects. <laughs> but anyway, it's just continue moving forward and hopefully things should go pretty well. This level as a whole isn't that long, neither are any of the creek levels to be honest. Most most of the time the creek levels are up the shorter ones in the game. Apart from the boulder levels, boulder levels go pretty quickly as well. But eh, I digress. Time your jumps by here because obviously the great plants they will they will snap at you every few seconds and you don't get hit by that. Especially when you don't have an Aku Aku mask. Although I think the great plants are instant kill anyway, so is that? How did I miss that? <laughs> oh god, it's gotta be one of those videos. Of course, I have got quite a bit of content, uh, not content, quite a bit of progress done in this video, so I'm, I'm happy all the same. And it's from, I think this is the island now where you're gonna start seeing me die quite a bit in the LP. I'm still gonna get through the game just fine, but you will see a lot more deaths from this point onwards, because it just happens, it's just more like the to see me die from this point. This is where the game's difficulty starts to get a bit hard. And I don't like hard difficulties. Oh well, anyway, there's a bonus room for us, so. Every time you go into a bonus room, actually, something that not many people seem to really know, the bonus rooms actually act as an alternate checkpoint, so if you die, you'll, re you'll end up getting re-sent back to where the previous bonus room you were at also was. Or the previous checkpoint, if there's a checkpoint in front of the bonus room. So, there's something for you guys if you, if you want, want read about dying because you haven't had a checkpoint in ages, but you had a bonus room. Don't worry, the bonus rooms are a checkpoint essentially. But of course, like I said, these bouncy things 10 bounces and you'll get 10 Wumper Fruit, which is all good. Also, I'm pretty much, I pretty much hover through 40, 30, 40 lives throughout the entire of this LP. I don't know. I, I sort of drop a points, but most of the time I'm always at around 20 to 40, or 30 to 40. I don't know. 
That seems to be the average that seems to stick out whenever I play Crash Bandicoot, because I tend to die a lot. Sadly, sadly. But anyway, it's time to finish off this creek level. We are pretty much right at the end of it, so grab an extra life. Not that we really need it. Well, I say that we don't really need it, but the amount of lives I do lose, yeah, I need it. <laughs> but anyway, there's that over and done with. So with that, folks, I'm going to call it a video here. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. And when we return next time, we'll take care of the second boss of the game, Ripper Roo. And he's quite a crazy one. So thanks for watching. See you after. Bye.